Hey fans, it's me Aaron for a comic show. Uh, free comic book day was insane. We did great in here. We had well over a thousand people through, gave away a pallet of free comics. It was the best ever. Uh, everyone came through for us. It was, it was a lot of fun. And we gave it a lot of good comics. We sold so many comics. Like I'm talking like our best sales day ever. And we gave up so, so much free stuff. It was awesome. And uh, let, let's say that brings me to the, the Secret Empire, the free di thing that uh, some people were burning on, um, on Twitter in the real world. Like in the real world, they were choosing to use um, fascist tactics such as bur book born burning to uh, protest fictitious perceived you know, fascists. I, I don't get it, I don't get it. If you don't like the book, don't read the book. If you don't like it, don't read it, talk crap about it, whatever. But, um, I've read issue two and three of Secret Empire, and I'm telling you, like, the end of issue two is like saying, uh, shut up, Meg, to the whole internet. Like, seriously, the end of issue two is a huge twist that, like, what, what the F is this stuff? Like, what, 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 what does this mean? Like, how is this possible? It, it, does this mean what I think it could mean? Because if so, wonderful. Uh, yeah, the end of issue two of um, Secret Empire. Even if you're not reading it, you walk into a comic shop, pick up that book, look at the last page, last panel, and uh, you might be pretty happy. So uh, there's that. Uh, moving on this week, they didn't get that much out. It's the week after Free Comic Book Day, so they tried to, to get all their big books out before then. But Young Animals, Bug, Adventure of Forager came out, and I loved it. This is, you know how much I love Young Animals, an imprint. I love uh, Mike Alred, always loved him back, Madman, all that stuff. Everything he's done, I've loved. and. Um, this was awesome. It starts with, with Forager Bug with saying Cosmic Odyssey is real. Like everything that was in continuity, that everything that happened is in continuity now because of, I guess, Rebirth and Reborn and all that stuff. So uh, it starts with Cosmic Odyssey. And then he's on this, this wild um, mission road trip through the multiverse where he just happens to be interacting with all the characters that Jack Kirby either created or had something to do with. So will Jack Kirby appear in this? Maybe. I don't know, but I love this first issue. I, I, I can't get enough of this. Uh, Young Animal is my DC. It's my weird, awesome DC stuff that's just, it, it's just, it tickles me. It just tickles me. I love the obscure characters. I love the obscure continuity. And um, if you're like me, you gotta get bug. Moving on, Action Comics. This is Revenge Part One. Since everything of Superman is in continuity, all his past is in continuity now, except for Connor Superboy so far, but I have a theory on that. Um, so all his villains are in continuity again, all of them. So uh, Eradicator and uh, Cyborg Superman, uh, Mongrel, they, 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 they all put together a revenge squad and they all go after uh, uh, Superman. And this ties into Suicide Squad with Zod, Neil before Zod, Zod is part of Suicide Squad now. I'm, not that he wants to be, I'm told that he has that bomb in his brain or whatnot. So uh, they're gonna go into Suicide Squad and get him, hopefully, it'll be cool. Moving on to All-Star Batman 10, Scott Snyder's book. Uh, it's the first ally, and um, the first ally is uh, uh, probably this Alfred on the cover, probably, you know, the first ally uh, of Batman. I am really, really um, stoked for the uh, dark matter, the dark days, the metal, the metal Batman stuff that Snyder's doing with Capullo and others. It's starting with uh, Dark Days, The Forge. It has that hollow foil cover. And you know, I'm not really big on gimmicky stuff, but when the gimmick has to do with the story, like metal and metallic cover, and the story is going to deliver in content, which I know Snyder will, I'm all for it. So weird metals in the DC universe, all connected, nymph metal, everything, uh, every metal of anything, Aquaman's Trident, um, uh, Red Tornado. Um, there is even a weird myth mythological metal in this bug book that I hope becomes part of it. So I'm super excited about that. And I'm reading through, rereading Scott Snyder's stuff, looking for any reference to any metal object of any kind. So let's go, that's fun, I'm excited. Uh, he says it's going to melt our faces off and you know, like heavy metal metal, like black metal. Let's go, I I'm excited. So we'll see, we'll see. But uh, it definitely, uh, it seems like DC is gonna rule the summer. Titans, the Lazarus contract, this is part one, which is Titans 11. Uh, Deathstroke has, uh, 
has a um, offer for Wally West, the, the, the white Wally. And uh, the other Wally's in here, and the two Titans teams are in here. And what happens with Deathstroke is uh, quite interesting. And obviously it, it alludes to the Judas contract, but it's the Lazarus contract. And that alludes to um, characters coming back to life. So get it if you're a Titans fan. It's giving you what you want. And then finally for DC, last days of the Justice Society of America. This was my jam back in the day. I loved that issue where the JSA were like fighting Nazis forever in a loop of Valhalla. And that's where they were in the um, post-Christ Infinite Earths uh, reality. And then it has the secret origins of all the characters from the Secret Origin comic. And this was out today, I think, because Flash 22 was going to be out today with Jay Garrick on the cover and the return of the JSA, which was going to be awesome. So it's one week early for that. But if you want a JSA primer, this is it. So enjoy that. Um, JSA is coming back with Flash 22. It's not really a spoiler. Uh, Jay Garrick's on the cover. My speculation is that Johnny Thunder and Jay Garrick, maybe Jay Garrick will have the pin and CU will happen and the Thunderbolt will happen and the JSA will be back and they can all kick uh, Dr. Manhattan's ass. Let's go. Um, I don't know. I'm excited about that. I, I love the JSA. Uh, moving on to Marvel, Star Wars, Screaming Citadel. This is a new five-part series that's uh, linking Star Wars with Dr. Aphra. And the premise is Luke Skywalker's training to become a Jedi Knight. Uh, Aphra has some artifact that can help him. And he's uh, working with her reluctantly because he wants to be a Jedi Knight and has no master to train him. And that's Luke Skywalker. So I've always liked the Star Wars stuff Marvel's done with Jason Aaron and Gillen. Uh, it's good stuff. Moving on to Secret Warriors, number one, has the Secret Empire type logo up here. This is mainly the young characters of uh, Inhumans. It has the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, has Daisy and Karnak, if you wonder where Karnak was, Karnak is here. And all of them, Moon Girl, Miss Marvel, Devil Dinosaur, this is where they are. And it's cool. It, it doesn't feel like the uh, Inhumans are trying to be the mutants, or, or the editors are pushing them as mutants. It feels like they have their own unique story that's with S.H.I.E.L.D. and against HYDRA. And HYDRA, yes, I make the argument that HYDRA isn't Nazis. In the movie, they were similar, they worked together, whatnot. In the comics, it's been retconned that they were working with the Nazis, and it was retconned again that they went back to the beginning of mankind, they were splintered into four splinter groups, and only one splinter group was involved with Nazis. Blah, blah, blah. Long story short, they're not making a good case for them when they, um, not being Nazis, when they have uh, internment camps for all inhumans. That's kind of a Nazi move. So kind of sucky there. But uh, that's why the inhumans are front and center in the war against the Hydra, because there's internment camps. That's horrible. The story was exciting. I dug it. And uh, as you know, I wasn't the biggest uh, guy on the bandwagon for inhumans. But I like this, their niche here with with S.H.I.E.L.D. and the young, fresh characters, and I've always liked Karnak. And I like the Royals off in space. They're off in space, and they're doing their thing there, so I'm fine with this. Uh, Rocket, you see this whole, like, Ocean Eleven looking, Reservoir Dogs looking cover. It's uh, a caper. He's hired to do a caper. He gets his team together, and he does it. You know, Rocket Raccoon is, um, he's a criminal. He's a criminal. He, he saves the universe, say, guards the galaxy, whatever. But he, he's a pretty good, um, pretty good criminal. And uh, he, he goes to jail a lot. I mean, he has an extensive record. And X-Men Blue 3, Sentinel's back. This team is really gelling here. This is the first time I've really felt like they're a legitimate X-Men team. Like, they're kind of like uh, just a young X-Factor in feel for me now. Whereas before, they were just like, oh, these are these time travel kids that why aren't they gone yet? So um, I'm digging this. And Colin Bunn is writing this with, um, he's good at Magneto. Magneto is behind it. And Colin Bunn is also writing Regression. It's a new image book. It's horror like he does so well. And uh, Regression is you know, past lives and stuff like that. So it's a hardcore horror book by one of the modern masters of horror, Colin Bunn. It's image. Get it if that excites you. And then finally, AD After Death, book three, Scott Snyder and Jeff Lemire is finally here. The end of the story. The book that was already offered for a movie with the first issue. Now you can read the end. I've loved this. It's so dense. It mixes prose with uh, sequential art. 
and it's here, all done. Get it and enjoy it. And that's the week after Free Comic Book Day. Kind of light, few good things. Come out and enjoy comics. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.